So let's talk about Nate Parker. I was so excited to see and support Nate Parker's Birth of a Nation. In fact, I can't remember the last time a film from a black filmmaker had this much buzz around it and was this highly anticipated. But recently I decided that I will not be spending my money to support the film when it comes out in October. It's come out that in 1999, Parker and his then roommate but current collaborator were charged with raping a classmate. The woman says that the man raped her while she was unconscious. Nate Parker was acquitted largely because they had had consensual sex before and the other man was convicted though that conviction was overturned in 2005 I believe because it was found that he had insufficient counsel and then prosecution chose not to retry the case the woman later sued Penn State University where they all attended college because she says that they were protecting them because they were wrestlers she was awarded $17,500. Now there are a lot of documents online about this case and they really don't look good. In fact, they look really, really bad. There's testimony from an eyewitness who says that he was invited into the room to rape the woman. There is a transcript of a conversation between Nate Parker and the alleged victim that is just so disconcerting. Now there have been lots of conversations about Nate Parker and this movie and rape culture and Nat Turner. But there's one defense of Parker that is just, it's just so mind boggling to me. That this is some vast conspiracy to keep us from seeing this story. And that this story, Nat Turner's story, is so important that we should just forget about everything else. That it doesn't matter. And it seems like black men are particularly fond of this defense. Al Sharpton told The Root that this is all some big scheme to keep Nate Parker out of the Oscar race. Charlemagne tweeted that the white man doesn't want us to see this story. Regarding the emergence of the accusations, Harry Belafonte said, is this going to be the price that young black women and men pay for making films of substance? And when asked about it, Anthony Anderson said, I think he's a great guy and an excellent filmmaker and a great actor. That's what we should focus on. So I actually get why black folks love conspiracy theories. I get why we gravitate toward them. We've been targeted in every way imaginable. The odds are stacked against us, but this isn't a setup. So let's get something straight. Nate Parker wrote and directed the film and he funded it independently. But now there's a whole lot of white folks money tied up in Birth of a Nation. Fox Searchlight, which is not a small company, bought the rights to the film for $17.5 million. And that's all because there was so much talk about the film at Sundance, which is not exactly a black film festival. That's why I'm so insulted by this idea that those of us who have decided not to support the film have been tricked by white supremacy. There are things that are more important than movies and Oscars and box office dollars, but mostly I'm offended by the callousness with which people approach the topic of rape. Rape is not a distraction. Women have such visceral reactions to discussions of rape because it's affected so many of our lives. A 2011 study from Black Women's Blueprint found that 60% of Black girls are sexually assaulted before they turn 18. And I choose to believe women because only between 2 and 8% of rape accusations are provably false. So saying that there are bigger issues than our concerns about Nate Parker and his association with this film is an outright dismissal of our experiences and our desires for safety. And regarding the timing issue, yeah, the timing is definitely bad for Nate Parker. But that's because most of us aren't trolling people's pasts looking for things to discredit them. Actually, it's much easier as a consumer to not know anything about the artist because then you don't have to worry about having any guilt about enjoying what they create. But once you know, you have a responsibility to act. Success absolutely makes you a target. But if you haven't done terrible things in your past, there's nothing to dredge up. And I'm actually not saying creators have to be perfect, but if people wanna draw hard lines, then that's their right. And for some of us, that line is rape. And I'm also not somebody who thinks that people have to pay forever for their misdeeds. I've recently been introduced to this concept of restorative justice, where people make amends with the communities that they've harmed after they acknowledge wrongdoing. That hasn't happened here. I feel the deepest sadness for the victim's family. And all of the people who worked on this film, including Gabrielle Union, who is herself a sexual assault survivor. I'm a black woman. I love history. I love black people. I really want this story to be told. But I also want rapists to be held accountable. I wanna live in a world where women don't have to worry about our safety. That's more important to me than my personal pleasure.
Writer Roxane Gay captured that sentiment perfectly in her article for the New York Times. I cannot value a movie no matter how good or important it might be over the dignity of a woman whose story should be seen as just as important. She's right. We are all figuring this stuff out. We all make negotiations. So I've decided that I'm actually not going to judge people who decide to see and support this movie. But I'm gonna pass.